Jesus said, now is the time where there shall be no more people going to one mountain or the other to worship, whether Jerusalem, whether in Mecca or wherever, they that must worship, the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. So this topic we are treating right now is about the harvest time for rapture. Harvest time for rapture. Let them grow together. But a lot of people are dying in thousands, in hundreds, even so many people that are dying through the common virus that is in all over the places today. They bury them in mass. Some families could not retrieve back their dead ones. And this is to let us know that we have brought nothing to this world and nothing will be carried away after departing from this world. Rather, we have to get ready either for the rapture day or for when the role is being called up yonder. Hallelujah to Jesus. The Tadami 30 and from verse 15 will be our first uh, chapter of the Bible to read. Deuteronomy 30 and um, from verse 15. Deuteronomy 30. How to prepare people for the harvest time for rapture. Whether we like it or not, a time will come when this world will no more be conducive for people to live in. Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15. Hallelujah. So I read See, today, I have set before you life and prosperity, death and adversity. Verse 16, for I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, statutes, and ordinances, so that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God may bless you in the land you are entering to possess. King James Russian says, Today, I call heaven and earth to be a witness unto you as I place before you life and death. And it went further to say, choose life. So you have a choice. The harvest time for rapture. All this why we have been gathering harvest of people together. All kinds of people, mixed multitudes, are coming to our churches. We've been trying to please them 
in making them comfortable in our worship centers. We have demonstrated our love towards them. Most of them have been blessing. They, they, they might have been a blessing to their leaders, their pastors, one way or the other. Did we tell them or do we make them to realize that they have a choice? You have a choice to life. You have a choice to a good life. Make a tree good. The fruit that will come out of it definitely will also be good. Let us not forget we have been brought out from somewhere. That is the land of Egypt, the land of slavery, the land of hardship. According to Deuteronomy 26, and verse number 8, then the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm with terrifying power and with signs and wonders. We have been brought out from somewhere. And how on earth today many people claim to be born again, they could not tell where they are coming from, or maybe they were ashamed of where they are coming from. If you don't know where you are coming from, it's like you have no where you are going. I like to read more from Deuteronomy 30. I read 15 and 16 the other time. If we can read up to 20, that will be fine. So, verse 17, that if your heart turns away and you do not listen and you are led astray to bow down to other gods and worship them. That is verse 17. The Bible tells us about other gods. That is, when we stop following the living God, the God that created the heaven and the earth, the one that placed before us life and death, the one that said, choose life. Verse 18, I tell you today that you will certainly perish and will not live long in the land you are entering to possess across the Jordan. You will, it means you will not have long life. Even that short life that is meant for you, you will live miserably. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cause. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Our forefathers, if they have missed it, if they are they have not chosen the way of the Lord. Must we follow them? Must we continue in their own way? Knowing where you are coming from, your background. We should not serve other gods. There are other gods. Like somebody was saying today on the Facebook. 
that even the Shango worshippers, they call on God. Anybody can be calling on God. But there's something that is certain. There are several man-made gods, demonic gods, familiar spirit gods, demonic gods. Choose life so that you and your descendant may live. A family where their generation has chosen a demonic God or man-made God and generation after them, they are claiming that is the religion of their father. As a matter of fact, today we are going to also treat by Facebook and YouTube the damages of religion, the damages they have caused. And that series will continue on the faulty foundation we have been treating for some time now. That time today might be 4 o'clock. So every Sunday we've been doing that. Love that love your God. Obey Him and remain faithful to Him. For He is your life. And He will prolong your life in the land the Lord swore to give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The covenant was with them, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank God for Jesus coming to save us, coming to shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. Many people do not know Jesus. They come to our churches. As I said, if you cannot tell where you are coming from, where you are now, you are going nowhere. Jesus declared to the world that he came from heaven. Satan was dethroned. Satan was rejected from heaven. But Jesus came, and that is why the Bible said that he that came from heaven is above them all. And the Bible also said that they overcame the devil, that is in Revelation chapter 12, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus the Lamb, and by the words of their testimony. Everybody, including pastors, prophets, general overseers, you should be able to know where you are coming from, your background, because there are several goals where you are standing now, so that when you need help, you'll be able to cry like Paul. Apostle Paul cried, he said, I wish to do good. I wish to serve God. I wish to love God with the whole of my heart. But I discovered in myself the good I wish to do, I couldn't do. But I see myself doing the bad, the evil, evil things. Then he cried out, Oh, wretched man, as I am, who will deliver me from this flesh. There's no pretense in serving God. God has placed before us life and death. And anyone that is committing sin is of the devil. We treated last week about who is a Jew. The Jew is not of the outside, but of the inside. God is spirit. How can we worship God in spirit and in truth? 
God is not in, in, in a place built by men. He wants to dwell inside of us. If we can create a place for him in our hearts, living by faith. It is time to prepare people for rapture. It is time to separate the corn from the sharp. It's time to let the bad show up and the good ones manifest. It's time to let those that have determined to perish to have their way as long as they are not ready to repent. All these years, let them grow together. Witches and wizards grow together and they have caused a lot of damages to the body of Christ. Now that virus is killing people, this is not the first time. Over 500 years ago, this has been happening. As a matter of fact, every hundred years, a country will rise up through chemical weapons to pollute the air. This is air pollution. The way I see it, and I believe that is exactly what is happening. Some wicked people, they will create an avenue to show their supremacy over others. Power tozo and the weak, the ignorant, the poor, they will suffer it. The day that know they are God, this is the time for them to be strong. This is the time for them to exercise their faith in Christ. This is the time to stand tall in the midst of troubles, in the midst of calamities. This is the time for the righteous to stand tall, not to panic, not to be afraid. This is the time to show who is who. They that belongs to God and they that belongs to the devil. I want us to read John chapter 8, John the Gospel. John chapter number 8 and from verse 12. This is the time to prepare people to meet with their Lord. To prepare not weak Christians but Christians that can stand tall in the midst of trouble. Then Jesus spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness. But we have the light of life. Why do we follow Christ? Why are we following him? If we don't know him, there is life and death. Life represents light and Christ. White death represents evil, false religion, and destruction. Life and death. We have a choice. Jesus stood and said, I am the light of the world. According to Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1, 
Darkness covered the earth. Gross darkness covered the people. But in the midst of darkness, if you can follow Christ, darkness will not overpower you. The light shines forth in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. When you follow Jesus, when you follow his teaching, when you keep God's commandments, this is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. When you hear the word of God and you act upon the word of God, you will walk in the light of life. Verse 13. So the Father is saying to him, you are testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. Even if I testify about myself, this is Jesus. My testimony is valid because I know where I came from and where I'm going. This is to back up what I've said. If you don't know where you are coming from, man of God, there are so many pastors leading congregation today. We don't know where they came from. They themselves, they cannot be proud to tell us where they are coming from. Some are coming from the the idol worshipping family, they are not proud. It means they are still hiding some things. Some people, they came out from idol worshippers and they are not proud to tell us. It means you have not been delivered from such powers. This is Jesus. He said, I came I know where I came from and where I am going, but you don't know where I come from or where I'm going. Because some people, they only knew Jesus when he was born. They didn't know Jesus in the beginning. They didn't know Jesus when the heaven and the earth were being created. They didn't know Jesus According to John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And not only that, in verse 14 of John chapter 1, and the Word became flesh. Many people didn't see Jesus from then. He said, you judge by human standards, that is what we can see physically. We have no spiritual eyes to see. Things we ought to see. He said, I judge no one. And if I do, people are holding on to this. <laughs> if I do judge, my judgment is true. Because I am not alone. But I and the Father who sent me judge together. I and my Father. You cannot separate us. We walk together. When you see the body of Jesus, the spirit inside of him, that is God. If you have no understanding, you cannot see. But he is the one declaring, I came from heaven. I don't judge alone. I judge accurately. Whatever judgment I pronounce, that is the correct judgment. Because my father is on the inside of me, leading me, we judge together. The next verse, 17. Even in your law, it is written that the witness of two men is valid. I am the one who testifies about myself. And the Father who sent me testifies about me. 19. Then they asked him, where is your father? You know neither me nor my father. Jesus answered, if you knew me, you will also know my father. He spoke these words by the treasury while teaching in the temple complex. But no one seized him because his hour had not come. And when after
master is our king. Even when they eventually seized him or arrested him and beat him, torture him, because they were ordinary people, because they cannot comprehend all his sayings. It's too much for them. See, today, the Bible said, that is in Matthew. Matthew, the Gospel, and the last chapter, Matthew, after they seize him, after they have tortured him, after they found him guilty, after they release a criminal, and they prefer to torture Jesus. Because what happened then is still happening today. It's even worse than then. People tortured him physically. But today, Christians, they that claim to have Jesus or to know Jesus, they are traumatizing Jesus. They are, they, they, they are crucifying Jesus. They, they, they speak against Jesus. Because what was done then, the bride that was given to the soldiers then, is still working till today. Telling lies about the word of God. A time will come when we shall all stand before the judgment throne of Christ. Because God the Spirit will not stand to judge anybody. The God the Spirit inside Jesus. Jesus that we see because he's the Son of Man. The Son of God Himself will be on the judgment seat. So I want us to read Matthew chapter 28 and from verse 11. As they were on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened after the priests had assembled with the elders and agreed on a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money and told them, say this, his disciples came during the night and stole him while we were sleeping. Verse 14, if this reaches the governor's ears, we will deal with him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been spread among Jewish people to this day. The money, the last sum of money, it wasn't a small money, large sum of money. They looted treasury to bribe the soldiers. Now that soldiers just started taking bribe now. Even since the time, before the time of Jesus, they've been taking bribe. So the bribe they took, then still working till today. To lie that he has not risen, that his body was being stolen. And this is what some religious people, religious leaders are preaching. See, today, so many people, their attitude, their lifestyle, their preaching is working against the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus and God himself cannot be separated. The ministry of Jesus or the, the, the mystery, the mystery of who Jesus is, is unknown to many people. Why? Because of these priests and the soldiers, they had meeting together and they decided that they will never 
Ten people, he has risen. How many people in our churches who believe Jesus has resurrected? Are they not following us because of what they needed? Are they not following us because of one miracle or the other? Are they not following us because of the earthly things? Earthly things that they need that have taken their feet away from the reality of the resurrection of Jesus. You dare not have Jesus and you suffer the push that he had suffered for the world. The beauty, at times when I watch how he was tortured, I could not believe my eyes that he, somebody like that can be tortured. Harvest time for rapture. This is the time that we should let it come to pass in the lives of the people following us. To have intimacy with God, the Amica. To know God intimately. To know that they have access to Him without any intermediary. Not standing on the way of the people. That John chapter there's something in John chapter 3. John the Gospel chapter 3. And verse 16. For God so loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, they have eternal life. That is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. The world is in darkness. Gross darkness covers the people. But if you can come to the path and the way of Jesus, follow him, you will be excluded from the darkness that is in the world. Let's continue from verse 16 of that John chapter 3 of 31. We have read, we have read 16, for God so loved the world. Now, from 31, the one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth is earthly and speaks in earthly terms. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. The one who has accepted his testimony has affirmed that God is true. For God sent him, and he speaks God's words. Since he gives the Spirit without measure, the Father loves the Son, and has given all things into his hands. The one who believes in the Son has eternal life. But the one who refuses to believe in the Son will not see life. Instead, the wrath of God remains on him. For how long will you continue to carry the wrath of God upon your head? Find out from where you are coming from. Some, so many families, they have the, the God of their family that they are all worshipping. And now you want to come out from that God and you think it's ordinary like that. You should be ready to fight a spiritual warfare. I remember I heard about the small God in our family. 
in our village one day, myself and my wife, we went to the village. There we saw where they will collect money from every family. There's a particular woman that will, on behalf of the family, claim she has made some sacrifices for the God of the family. There I saw used cutlasses, rough ones, dirty ones, rotted cutlasses, and the rest of them. I bought kerosene, burnt, set everything on fire, and there we came back home. The woman heard about it, and she vowed, the person that did this will not last for seven days. Here I am. It's over three years. It's over five years now. To the glory of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, there are that are caused God's many. In fact, all these demonic gods, they are so common that if every person wants to have a god, they are available. Like in China, we know they don't believe in the living God. But maybe now, some of them are believing. You cannot come to God the Father except through Jesus Christ. How he did it that way, nobody can query him. No controversy. The world is in darkness. Darkness, gross darkness cover the people. But if you follow Jesus, it's the light of the world. It's the light that will bring you out of darkness. There is no religion attached to this. Except by believing in him. The Father did not give him the Spirit by nature. No. The full Spirit of God dwells inside of him. We are coming to the tree that bears record in heaven and on earth. We have read that John chapter 3. Now, we want to come to 1st John chapter 5. 1st John, because that is very, very important. The world is confused. Why would they be confused? Because when Jesus resurrected 2,000 years ago, there was a conspiracy. The priests and the soldiers came together. They gave large sum of money to lie that he had not resurrected. That is to cause confusion in the world. And that bribe they paid is still working till today. The bad seed they sold, we are yielding the fruit today. The day that will come out, they that will realize this error and the mistake. They that will separate themselves and trust in the Lord Jesus. Because you can't know God the Father except by Him. He said it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father except by me. So, all this religion, all this religion set up, all these priests of different kind of religion that we have today, you are misleading people. You are causing confusion for the people. The bribe the soldiers took is the one working. You are still paying the price. You are still benefiting from that bribe. First John. Open your Bible with me and let us 